Coaster Geeks, start your engines. Where to start with this ride? Intimidator 305 at King's Dominion opened in 2010 at a cost of $25 million and it was manufactured by the renowned Swiss roller coaster manufacturer Intamin. This thing is a monster. It is 305 feet tall, has a 300 foot drop, a top speed of 90 miles per hour. The first drop is angled at 85 degrees. And of course this features a cable lift hill like a lot of Intamin coasters. The length of this ride is 5,100 feet. Ever since I got back into roller coasters and gained an interest for them again a couple years ago i found out about intimidator 305 and ever since then really it's been right at the top of my bucket list along with coasters like fury 325 and el toro and i finally got the chance to ride this and i was so excited to get on this thing and i cannot wait to share my experience with you guys in this review so stay tuned <laughs> Many coaster enthusiasts call this one of the best coasters on the planet, one of the most intense rides you can find out there, and some will even put it all the way up at the very top as far as the best rides go. I can definitely tell you Intimidator 305 is one of my favorite coasters I've ridden to date. It is so intense. You go around the first turn after that drop, and every time I rode it, I was graying out so hard. My vision was getting so blurry. And then it all comes back to you when you get to the top of that second hill. And then you can take in all the nice pops of airtime and the great twists and turns. So I'm going to be talking about the whole ride experience and what I think of it, some of the pros and the cons. So first, let's look at a POV here. Intimidator 305 starts out with that famous gentleman start your engine saying at the very beginning. Then you get rocketed out of the station with this awesome cable lift. I love these cable lift hills. They get you to the top so fast. I love it. You get a pretty awesome view of the area here. You go down this massive first drop, go around this tight right turn, and this is where you start to really gray out here. And then you start to rise up and then it, your vision comes back right about here. You get a nice pop of air time there and you dip down really fast. You get a nice pop of air time there. You twist around. To the left then you go to the right go to the left and then to the right again just lots of really tight whippy turns here then you hit this airtime hill you get a nice pop there you go up into another airtime hill then you twist back around to the right and then we're gonna go through a couple more twists and turns here and then we hit the final breaks so as you can tell this is actually a pretty short ride being that you're flying along at 90 miles per hour and the track length is 5,100 feet you fly through it pretty quick so the ride time from drop to break is pretty short just keep that in mind everybody complaining about this Kings Island Giga this is considered to be one of the best coasters out there and it's a pretty short ride Intimidator 305 is an absolutely intense ride it does all things well as far as intensity goes one thing that I noticed with this when I wrote it, that first drop is 300 feet, but it honestly doesn't really feel that long. I mean, it's a great first drop and you get some good airtime. Don't get me wrong. You get some good airtime on that first drop, but it just, it doesn't even feel as long as like Millennium Forces. And I don't know if it's just the way it pulls out of that drop, but all in all, it's a really good drop. And then you have that turn to the right. And I mean, that's one of the best parts of the ride. That's where you get a lot of that crazy intensity from. That's where you get that gray out. And um, it's, it's unbelievable. Never experienced anything like that before. Then of course, that second hill, you get some good airtime on that. And then throughout the ride, there are a couple other decent pops of airtime. But this ride doesn't really focus on the airtime all that much. This is just about the sheer speed and the intensity. So that's what this ride really does well is intensity, intensity, intensity with a few nice pops of airtime. So there's not a whole lot of variety with the elements on this ride. After the first drop and that first airtime hill, it's really just a bunch of twists and turns. And I mean, I think that's fine. It's fine for the type of ride that this is. 
but it does not feature a lot of variety in terms of the layout. It's just, you, you know, watching the POV and as I'm going through it and looking at it, it's just turn this way, twist this way, another S curve, you know, twist this way. And then there's a couple hills thrown in there. All in all, I think it's a good, strong layout. I mean, it does what it does extremely well. One of the biggest cons of this ride, I think, is the trim brakes on the one airtime hill about halfway through the ride, you hit this airtime hill and you get some pretty good airtime on it, but it would honestly be so much better if those trim brakes weren't there or they didn't hit so hard. I'm sure there's a reason that they have them there and the ride is still great as it is, but you really feel those trims. I mean, it slows you down quite a bit. After that, you still pick up a lot of the speed and it doesn't really feel like you lose much momentum and you fly through the rest of the layout. But those trims on that airtime hill is, is kind of unfortunate. You really do feel them. You hit it pretty hard. But that's the biggest con I can think of with this ride. Another one is those over the shoulder restraints. And this is one of the biggest things a lot of people mention with this ride. Not really sure exactly why they chose to do the over the shoulder restraints. I've heard that it could possibly be due to the sheer intensity and they're afraid of people black out and they didn't have the over the shoulder restraints that, you know, they would like lean over and it maybe would be unsafe or something like that. So maybe it was a safety concern due to that. I don't know, but it would be really awesome if this had the Intamin T-Bar restraints like on Millennium Force because those are absolutely fantastic, really good restraints. These soft over-the-shoulder restraints aren't bad. They don't really hinder the ride in any way. They're not uncomfortable. You don't bang your head on them or anything. So they're not really bad. They do inhibit some of the airtime, I feel like. For example, going down that first drop. Now, the first drop does have really good airtime. Don't get me wrong. But it's not nearly as good as the ejector airtime you get going down Millennium Force's first drop. But still, it's a very good drop with really good airtime. And overall, this is a really good ride and it just focuses on intensity and speed and it excels at that. So for those reasons, I'm gonna have to give Intimidator 305 a 10 out of 10. In my book, this is a near perfect ride. It does have its flaws, granted, but it does the things it does extremely well. And if you're all about the intense rides, then you'll love this. Now, if you're somebody who doesn't really care for intense rides, you probably want to stay away from this. But this, in my book, is definitely a must ride. If you are a person really big into coasters and you like intense rides, then this is for you. So let me know what you think about Intimidator 305 in the comments below. Be sure you like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook at Coaster Daddy and Instagram official at Coaster Daddy official. Thank you guys so much for watching again. Bye.